Today I'm going to be taking a look at a rather new Linux distribution that I've never looked at before. This distribution is called Crystal Linux, and looking at their website, this is going to be a pretty neat little distribution. You can see the blurb here, it's an Arch-based distribution, it's a brand new Arch Linux based distribution, friendly, powerful, easy to use. Doesn't tell you much there at the top of the blurb, but you can see Onyx built in. So Onyx is their customized uh, GNOME based desktop environment. You can see they have automatic backups using TimeShift. So I'm assuming they're going to use ButterFS for their file system because TimeShift and ButterFS work well together. And then Amethyst. Now Amethyst is their own AUR helper. So it's uh, uh, similar to something like Yay or Paru or Aura. So Amethyst, you can see you can use it at the command line with A-M-E for, I guess that's a shorthand alias for Amethyst. And you can see they're giving you an example, A-M-E install NeoVim dash git. So instead of using some of the cryptic Pac-Man flags, like, you know, when you do a sudo Pac-Man dash capital S NeoVim, for example, to install NeoVim, you know, why capital S? Well, capital S for sync and install, but really most people that use command line package managers, if you're used to using things like apt, in Debian and Ubuntu or DNF and Fedora and Zipper and SUSE and things like that. You're used to just using the command line installer to say command line installer install package, right? So that's kind of cool that they've added these really easy to remember aliases. Now one other feature about Crystal Linux that they don't mention here on the front page of the site is they have their own custom installer called the Jade installer and here's a link to their GitLab if you want to go check out the source code for all of their custom applications. I'm sure under software here, you can find yeah, the Jade installer. So that's kind of cool that they're not using Calamari's like every other Arch-based distribution, which Calamari's, you know, since I've been building my own ISOs for DTOS and trying to wrap my head around Calamari's, Calamari's is a really strange and unusual beast that you really fight with a lot, you know, trying to, to build a distribution around Calamari. So the Crystal Linux guys, they just scrapped that whole idea and it makes a lot more sense instead of using a distro agnostic installer like Calamari, just build your own that's actually designed for your particular distribution. So that's rather neat. So I'm going to click the download button. I'm going to go ahead and grab an ISO and I'm going to run through a quick installation and first look inside a virtual machine. All right, and I booted into the ISO. Um, it, it boots us straight into a desktop environment. There's no login manager or anything like that. So let me click on the desktop. And you know, before I do anything else here in this live environment, I will change the display resolution. Let's go ahead and make this a proper 1920 by 1080 resolution. Even though it's not gonna remember it, this is just for this live environment session here. And welcome to Crystal Linux. Press start to start installing Crystal Linux. Okay, well, let's go ahead. And country of origin, it's already uh, correctly assessed that I'm in the US. Uh, keyboard, it's set to US normal, which is correct. I could test that, you know, if I wanted to type something. Uh, we'll just click next. Region and zone, it is already correctly guess probably based on geolocation that I am in the central time zone in the US because it's chosen America and Chicago even though I'm not in Chicago but it Chicago at least is in the central time zone here in the US I'm probably a good you know, 12 hour drive from Chicago I'm a long way away from actually being in Chicago uh, and then moving on locale English US is correct additional locales I don't need to add any additional ones for me date and time Date and time is ooh, UTC time. Do I really need UTC? I, I guess it doesn't matter. Numbers and currencies look all right. It's using dollars, for example. It's using commas and uh, decimals in the right place. Username. Let me go ahead and create my strong and complicated username and password. It's already set to have the administrator account turned on. So my DT user will also have sudo privileges and you can see enable super user account that's turned on. So we have a, a root user that we could also switch over to. I'm assuming if I turn this off, we just wouldn't have a root user. All we would have is sudo available for us. And I'm gonna go ahead and click next and then select our desktop by default, their Onyx desktop, which is their unique GNOME based desktop here. That is the default. So that's what I'm gonna go with for purposes of this video. But it's, again, it's based on Arch Linux. 
you know, you could install GNOME, Plasma, XFCE, Sway, or i3. They're all in the Arch repos. Or, you know, you could install one of these and then install some other desktop environments and window managers that aren't even in this list, right? But I'm just going to go with their default Onyx desktop environment. Under miscellaneous, we can set a custom host name. I'm going to call this computer crystal-vert in case I ever SSH into it. That's the name, right? The host name. You use it typically for computers on a network, SSHing into different machines. If you give each machine its own unique host name, it's easy to know which machine you're actually logged into. Then time shift is turned on. ZRAM D, that's a compression, a compressed area of swap in RAM that's also turned on. So I'm just going to leave the defaults and click next. And then let's partition the drive. We can do manual partitioning, or you can just give the entire disk over to Crystal Linux. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to give the entire virtual hard drive of this virtual machine over to Crystal Linux. Just let it do its own automatic partitioning and installation. Then we have a summary screen. So let's double check, make sure locale, time zone, keyboard layout, username, sudo's enabled, roots enabled, desktop environment of choice, the right drive, with, there's only one drive in this VM, but if you were doing this on physical hardware, make sure you're actually uh, installing to the correct drive. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and click next and let it install. This portion of the installation will probably take about five to 10 minutes on my machine. I do like the fact that it's actually going to give us a uh, little embedded terminal here in the installer. That way you can actually see what the installer is doing rather than just a progress bar, which really doesn't tell you much. You know, you can actually watch the terminal commands that it's executing in the background right here in the terminal. I'm going to step away for a few minutes. I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee and I'll be back once the installation has completed. And the installation completed, that really didn't take very long at all, maybe five or six minutes once it got to this portion here. Uh, one thing I would say that it's, it's kind of hard to tell when it finishes because, you know, it's just running in the terminal and then at the end you get installation finished, you may reboot now. It'd be nice if they had like a pop-up dialog here in this application. You know, I'm assuming it's a GTK application since they're basing everything off GNOME. Uh, that would be nice if they had that dialog pop-up that, hey, the installation has finished, so it's obvious in case you're not really following along because it's easy for you to get to this point and then not realize, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes after the fact, oh yeah, that installer finished a long time ago. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and click next and then reboot. And it rebooted just fine, and we get our login manager. It looks like they're using GNOME's login manager, GDM. Now, let me move my head here. Uh, we don't have any kind of cogwheel or settings. Um, if I click on my name, okay, there it is. If I click on the cogwheel, I just want to make sure, uh, are we running X11 or are we running Wayland? Because GNOME typically defaults to Wayland these days, and they do have GNOME, GNOME on Xorg. So GNOME is just GNOME on Wayland. GNOME on Xorg is the X11 GNOME. Onyx on Xorg is their default. So they're defaulting to Xorg, but we do have an Onyx on Wayland option, I'm assuming. I'm just going to use Xorg here in this VM, although Wayland should also work in a VM. On physical hardware, depending on your equipment, your mileage may vary. And it boots us into the desktop environment here. Uh, one thing I'll do before I go through their little welcome application is once again, change the display resolution. This should be the last time I need to do it. Now that it's actually installed, it will remember this setting here forevermore. Go ahead and hit apply, tell it to keep the changes. And now I'll never have to do that. So let's go ahead and run through their welcome screen. So make your choices. This wizard will take care of everything. So let's start. Color scheme. Do we want a light theme or a dark theme? I like dark themes, so I'll choose the dark. And then package manager. Uh, do we want to enable FlatHub? That's the default. FlatHub beta. That's not the default, so I'll leave that turned off. We could also enable Nix. I'll leave that turned off. I'm just going to go with the defaults here. And then we have to give our sudo password, I guess, to enable FlatHub. And then automatic ButterFS snapshots. Okay. Amethyst read more. So there's nothing to do here. This is a slideshow, I guess, while it's setting some stuff up. Although if you wanted to, assuming if I clicked on it, probably open a browser maybe. And we get to read the Wikipedia page about ButterFS. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, I mean, I guess Wikipedia is as good a resource as any. And being an Arch-based Linux distribution, I, I kind of would have expected them just to open the Arch Wiki page on ButterFS. It'd probably been a much more appropriate page, but I don't know.
And then it says set up finish. So there really wasn't much to set up, right? You just choose, did you want to enable Flathub or not? And did you want to enable Nix or not? So, uh, and the dark mode, of course. So really simple, welcome application here. And then reboot now. So one more time, we have to reboot. Uh, because we enabled Flathub and all of that, it needs to reboot after doing that. So, all right, and we're back into the Onyx desktop environment. So it looks like GNOME with some extensions such as the dash to panel here. Uh, I will say the panel is a little big for me. I wonder, I'm assuming if we could get into uh, extensions. Yeah. So, and I'm assuming if I hit super, I could have also searched for extensions kind of like you would in you know GNOME's search bar, or you have dash or whatever they call it in GNOME. And let me go ahead and search through the extension list for dash to panel, which is set to 56, which is kind of big. Let me click on the settings button and actually it's set to 48, set it to 32. Yeah, makes it quite a bit smaller. Of course, I could play with some of the other settings as well. But yeah, I just like a little smaller panel. There's no reason for it to take up so much of the, the screen at the bottom. If I hit the show apps button here. Let's see what is installed out of the box. I will say that that installation was kind of quick, so there's not going to be much here, which there isn't. So uh, they really don't have very many apps at all installed. Uh, weather, which I'm assuming is GNOME weather, GNOME clocks, the extensions application, which we were just in a second ago. Firefox is the browser being arch based and rolling release. I'm assuming it'll be the latest Firefox, although I'm not sure if I need to do an update on the system. I don't know if their Jade installer uh, does a fresh update on some of this stuff or not. Let's do a help about Firefox. 116.0.3 and they're installing that as a flat pack. Back into the show apps menu here. Uh, we have our calculator. We have gedit which is GNOME's plain text editor. Uh, system monitor. Time shift for backups. Under the utility subcategory, GNOME DS Image Viewer, Archive Manager, Document Viewer for viewing PDFs. Really not much here. Uh, the console, of course, is the GNOME's uh, terminal. They're calling it console now, or I don't know if it's a completely new application or... Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> the GNOME's naming scheme is a little weird. I'm, I'm going to put that down here because I may come back to the terminal a lot. So I just want to make sure I've got that pinned. So let's talk about some of what they were talking about on their website as far as what makes Crystal Linux unique. Well, time shift. So I'm assuming the file system is ButterFS. We can actually verify that, by the way, if I open the console. For those of you that are wondering how you would figure out whether a system or a file system is, you know, extend for ButterFS or whatever it happens to be. There's various ways you can do it, but one command you can use is the DF command and give it uh, dash capital T H and you get a list of your partitions and you also get a the type. So what file system is on it. You can see ButterFS is the main partition there, the home partition. ButterFS is also the root partition. We got some other partitions, some smaller partitions that are also Extend 4. I'm assuming they're using Extend 4 for the boot, and they are. So they're using ButterFS. So let's create a snapshot. So, uh, snapshot device not selected. So we have to select a device. Let's run through the wizard. And ButterFS is already selected. So uh, select the only device that can be selected. Let's schedule it uh, monthly, and we'll keep. Actually, let's schedule it weekly. Monthly's too long. We'll keep three of them and go ahead and click next. And do we want to include the home sub volume in backup? Sure, why not? I'm not going to keep this uh, VM, so this is just for demonstration purposes. And then click finished. And now time shift is active. It should take our automatic snapshots every week, but it's only going to keep three of them. So if you take a weekly snapshot for the next year. You're going to have 52 snapshots, which is taking up a lot of space on your drive. Now, just delete all of them except the last three. The other big thing they touted on their website was their Amethyst Package Manager. So that was kind of a Pac-Man wrapper and also an AUR helper. So if I did A-M-E dash capital S lowercase y-U, let's see if it knows that command. You know, it's essentially Pac-Man S-Y-U. So you could just use it in place of Pac-Man. 
and you can see everything is up to date. So it already updated the system, I guess, during our installation. So that's nice. Or it may have done it during the uh, welcome screen when we rebooted after the installation. Let me do an AME install instead of dash s you know use the install alias for dash capital s and i'm going to install something i know does not exist in the standard arch repositories it's only in the aur and that is shell dash color dash scripts my shell color scripts package i have that over in the aur and it is smart enough to actually find it and it's downloading and extracting the files uh select a package I guess I didn't select it. I'm not sure how to have selected it. It was only one package. But just hitting enter a couple of times got me to this. All right, and now that I got show color scripts installed, let's see if it actually works. So let's do this command. Color script is the name of the binary and give it this option, random. So let's get a random color script. I'll up arrow. We get another random color script, another one, and another one. And if I wanted to be super cool, I could vim into our dot bash RC, the bash config file. And I'm assuming they're using bash as the default shell. I could be wrong. But if they are using bash, I'm going to add this command, color script random, exactly what I entered in the terminal a minute ago. Now just having that in the bash config, now every time I open a terminal, that runs the bash cell. See, I get the color script. That one was a little too big. I need the terminal to open full screen for some of them to look right. No, that one's a, a pretty big one. I could set actually a default size for the terminal if this is the GNOME terminal um, or console as they're calling it. Uh, let's go into, I say I could do some settings. I'm not sure where the settings for this thing are. Um, keyboard shortcuts, and uh, that's the shortcuts. Do I not have any options for, like, the default size for the terminal window? I, yeah, I, I don't know about that terminal, because the GNOME terminal, at least the GNOME terminal I'm familiar with, had a lot more options for settings. Let me open the terminal one more time. Uh, one thing we should check with the Amethyst uh, Package Manager is, let's do an AME install. Something that I know is only available as a flat pack, or at least it's, it's available in other package formats, but I know Discord. Uh, is that in the main Arch repositories? I don't think it is. So let's see. We try to install it here. What it actually will try to install it as packages. Discord. Uh, so Discord is in the main repository. So I'll click no on that. What is something that wouldn't be in the main Arch repositories? Spotify, maybe? Yeah, we get something a little different, right? Like... The coloring, we get an icon this time. So uh, I think this is going to pull down Spotify from the AUR. Okay. <laughs> uh, I wonder if AME probably, it probably doesn't work with Flatback, my guess. I wonder if their graphical package manager, their GUI package manager works with Flatback. I'm going to decline taking that uh, install of Spotify. Let's open the graphical package manager. Let me get out of the terminal here. Oh, updates. Uh, there's just one update. I'll decline taking that. Let's go ahead and explore. Let's do the search button and let's search for Spotify. I actually have never used Spotify. I don't know anything about it, but I do know Spotify. It's probably not in the main Arch repositories. It's not. They have it from Flathub. If I clicked install, let's just go ahead and make sure one of the flat packs installs correctly. But let's just try one. Looks like it's installing just fine. And it looked like it finished the installation. And then it's loading app details. I don't know what's going on there. No. But now we could open Spotify. Let's so click the open button just to make sure the application runs. And is it running? Where did it go? It looked like it tried to open the window. Then it went away. Hmm. Again, I don't know anything about Spotify. That could be normal behavior for the application. I don't know. I don't think that's normal behavior for it, though. I think... I think that's kind of broken. Let me open up another terminal. Let's do flat pack list. Spotify is installed. I do flat pack run com dot Spotify. If I can type dot client. Looks like some GTK error. Failed to load Canberra GTK module. I don't know. Could be a problem with the flat pack. Yeah, the actual flat pack on Flat Hub. I don't know.
We've got some quick launchers down here. Of course, I added the console. The only other quick launchers they have is the calendar. It's kind of odd to have a calendar as a quick launcher. How many people actually use a calendar on their computer? And, and the ones that do, how many of them use it often enough you need a quick launcher for it? Like, can you just click over here or something and get a quick calendar? I don't know. That's just strange. Of all the things to have a quick launcher for, we do have files. The file manager, now that makes sense. Uh, let's see, what file manager are they using? Is this GNOME's file manager? Uh, of course, this is the old Nautilus file manager. And then we have our software center, which I've already opened here. And there's really not much else to look at. What makes this distribution unique, of course, was the Jade installer, which I loved. I liked their Amethyst package manager, the wrapper around Pac-Man and the AUR helper that's built into it. Uh, and really, their unique GNOME desktop environment, Onyx, here is rather nice as well. Not a lot of programs installed, so really not much to look at there. One thing, one last thing I should check. Let's go ahead and change backgrounds. Let's see if they have any unique wallpapers installed. Looks like it's just a lot of abstract art. I don't know if these are default GNOME wallpapers or if this is something they created themselves. Either way, I like the wallpaper pack. There's some really nice stuff in here. Since I'm using a dark theme, a light wallpaper like this one probably look really good. Here's some light wallpapers as well. Yeah, I mean, I could go with something like that. So this has just been a quick and cursory first look at Crystal Linux. I love it, right? For a brand new Linux distribution, they've got a lot going on here. Uh, their own installer, that Jade installer, was fantastic. I really like that. Uh, their desktop environment, their own custom version of GNOME that they call Onyx with the extensions to make it look kind of like Windows. I like that too. Uh, really everything about it, uh, there, there's a lot to look forward to in the future. So with Crystal Linux, I think I'm going to keep up to date with it as far as, you know, as they go forward, as they especially improve on the installer and on their Onyx desktop environment, I may take a look at future releases. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Daniel, Gabe, James, Matt, Paul, Royal West, Armor Dragon, Commander Angry, George Lee, Methos, Nate, Arian, Paul, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Reality, Teats for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Souls Astry, Tools Deviler, War Gentu, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Crystal Linux would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I depend on you guys. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like Crystal Linux, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.